you feeling now? Okay. Well, I'm on the nice way. Yeah. I don't know what... I don't, I've never... Keep doing your deep breathing. It's probably because you've been under a lot of stress. I've got a mental health issue and I can't cope what you're making me do. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, hypervigilance, borderline personality disorder. I suffer from depression. Or happy, sad. I can't cope with anything you're giving me. Angry, broken, lonely, all at the same time. Suffocating. What are you doing? I'm still normal. I am human. My name's Emily and I started with depression around the age of 15. I started by just feeling down, not confident, just didn't want to go out, didn't have any motivation to do any tasks. And then it started to progress into not wanting to get up, not wanting to shower, just sitting in my pyjamas and just sitting in front of the TV, not really watching it, just like staring blankly. And then I started to realise that it was because of the contraceptive pill that I was on. It was Dianet and there are side effects of depression with that, but it seemed to affect me more than it had affected anyone else that my doctors had really spoken to. The most common experiences of mental health issues are depression and anxiety. And the symptoms can be not wanting to get out of bed, fearful of going into lectures. No motivation to work. I didn't go to college, I didn't go to school. Um, I still don't come to uni sometimes just because I don't feel like I could face it. Having thoughts about not being able to cope or paranoid thoughts about people not liking them. It did start to push people away just well for their good is what I thought at the time. I thought it was too much of a hindrance and being miserable and I felt guilty for how I was which made me feel worse. A series of, of things like that and that can lead to physical uh, changes, loss of appetite. I didn't eat, I lost a lot of weight to the point where I started to lose my hair. And sleep pattern changing. I'm not sleeping until five in the morning and then get up at seven because I'll go to bed at night and think I haven't done this, I haven't done this, I haven't done this, I need to do this, there's not enough this and I don't help, it, but I can't help it. I'm being tearful. I've had a cage where someone said, how are you doing today? And I've just like burst into tears because <laughs> like, I just didn't know what to say. Depression is slightly different. Sometimes when the anxiety does recede, you find that people have quite a low mood. And low mood can be an absence of emotional engagement. We call it quite flat. Like, you could win the lottery and you can, okay. Or you could lose a parent and you'd have the same reaction from, okay and it's a dangerous place to be in. If you don't care about anything, you don't know what you're gonna do. Anxiety is you're more likely to see presenting. They're more likely to be engaging, but not really in a healthy way, but they'll be engaging about their anxiety. And they have what we can call intrusive thoughts, where account. they suddenly start to think that they need to check their bank account every three hours or so because they're worried something's gonna happen or somebody's gonna take their money. I need to check my bank account now. Quieter anxiety can be that you just sit in your room worrying all the time and so you internalise a lot of thoughts and it's called overthinking. Now most people are likely to have their first episode of mental ill health in those areas between the ages of 18 and 23. I've just had my first anxiety attack. I'm calming down at this moment but my face was vibrating. I just couldn't get my words out. I was like, Mom. And my mum was like, why are you crying, why are you crying? And I, I just couldn't get my words out. It was like I couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. The first thing you've got to look at is what are you doing? Are you overdoing things? Are you out all night and working all day? Are you being realistic about what you can achieve in your degree? or are you being fed by some other outside interest? So and the very simple thing to do, the first thing to do is slow down. Just slow down. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Sleep is really key for anxiety. Make sure you're drinking enough fluids, like water, squash. Try to keep off things like Red Bull and alcohol when you're feeling anxious. Make sure that you have time in the day to do your own things. I can't even concentrate doing my dissertation right now.
I've been um, to the doctors recently for my dissertation for anxiety because even like yesterday, I sat down with my dissertation in front of me, looked at how much I got to do, looked at how much I'd done, and like, don't get me wrong, I've made good progress, but I've sat and cried and just looked at my laptop screen. Plan your work. Try and do things like 20 minutes of work, 10 minute breaks, because we know concentration is very difficult to maintain when you're anxious. But if you find that those things are not working for you, then Contact the counselling and mental wellbeing team through the registration form on iCity and have a chat with one of us. You might not need counselling, but you might need a chat just to reboot, rethink. But talk, talk, talk to your friends, talk to your family. Try and get a sense of perspective and come back to that when you're worried. Another thing is, like, my current partner, he gets it, but he doesn't get it. Because depression can be, like... Um, a collection of things that have caused you to feel a certain way but more often than not it's a chemical imbalance in the brain where you just get loads of crazy signals that tell you to think thoughts and emotions and to say to someone I'm really upset I feel awful I feel like I want to disappear and walk away but I've got no reason for it people don't get that nobody understands and as much as you do try to understand unless you live in it you don't understand. So sometimes he doesn't quite get when I say, I don't know why this is happening, but it is. And he'll like try and figure it out. You try and get in their head, but it's complicated to get in their head. Quite often when I work with couples uh, and one of the partners has depression, say, I say the other person needs a task. They need to do something that supports you. You have to give them something. Sometimes I just need people to like bring me food, bring me a blanket, put films on, put good music on, just to help me detach from how I'm feeling. But there's some days where I need someone to say like, look, pull your finger out, get up, do something. And you don't actually know which approach to take sometimes, do you? So. I think it's, it's something that you need to vocalise with each other and communicate to explain, like, this is how I feel, this is what happens when I feel that way, but that's the difficult bit. If people with mental health problems are able to be explicit about what's happening to them, they're more likely to have good relationships. Families tend to cope by working around the person with a mental health problem. Sometimes my parents are scared to leave me alone because of how I was before. They think, well, if you were in that mental state before, you could easily slip back into it if you don't act on it. The best relationships I do have are with my children. They're more understanding because obviously I'm their dad regardless. Rather than try and push me to improve or push me to feel better or try and do anything, they just let me do what I need to do and they're just aware of my state. Unfortunately, people don't always get that because of the stigma and the stereotypes surrounding mental health, where people think that if you've got a mental health issue, you're in some way deficient. That was another thing I'd speak to my friend. I'm open, I'd say, yeah, he's got bipolar. Oh, he's crazy. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he is probably the type to end up killing you or something. Why have you got to be so negative and why are you stereotyping this person? It's bad enough that this is something they deal with every day and in their head they're dealing with things, but they have to, to society, be labelled as crazy. People who have mental health problems are normal. You know, one in three people will have a mental health problem. People with illnesses and disabilities, they can be good partners, they can be good parents, they can be good at their jobs. It doesn't stop them doing anything what would be considered normal in society. I don't think there's too much of a stigma with young people. I think there's a problem with the 40 to 55 male age group, but I think the stigma is less. However, we do need to see more men coming for help. My name's Andy. I was finally diagnosed with borderline personality disorder in 2011 stroke 2012. Personality disorder, uh, an emotionally disturbed personality disorder, is a diagnosis they give for sometimes personality traits. From the age of six, I've had my mum, my dad, family, friends, my mum's family, my mum's friends, 
peers growing up through school, teachers, all these people tell me, not that there's something different, which allows you to grow and think, yeah, I'm different, but I'm okay. Or I'm different and I need to get this looked at. When somebody's telling you for that amount of time in your life that there's something wrong with you, not that there's something wrong going on and they care for you and want to help you, just that there's something wrong with you. From six years old, to what age does that person say to themselves, well, I need to get this checked out. I need to go and get it checked out. I was 34 when I went to get it checked out. Mental health has a huge impact on the people around. That's because often the behaviour is aimed at others. So relationships can be quite fraught. There can be a lot of tension in relationships. Are you, are you using bipolar as a tool to just be an asshole? My ex-partner made me feel guilty for feeling bad. Like, it was my fault that I was depressed and that was affecting his mood and I needed to sort myself out because I got the problem and I was the problem in the relationship. Parts of the relationship where there's a, a clash, I've been told that I'm a nutter or that I should be sectioned. These, unfortunately, are things that would happen. There is a reason why a lot of people with mental health problems are very lonely. And that's because it is difficult to sustain long-term relationships. You know, arguing. You get in an argument, it's quite bad and they say some messed up things and then and then it, it goes, it's one extreme to another. When you're in relationships like that, obviously you, you then refrain from sharing things because you feel that you're always looked down on or pitied and you're not you know, fully embraced as the person who you are, even though that mental health issue that you may have is part of you. So you need a lot of tolerance and patience to be with somebody who has a mental health problem. Some people have got the the knack for it, so to speak. Some people can help and some people can empathise. People like Steve and Fry, who has done a lot to support the understanding of bipolar with his own illness as well, have really helped people to understand and to be empathic and sympathetic. Look at someone like Princess Diana and all through what she suffered and the, uh, the great act she was able to achieve by doing what she did, irrespective and in spite of the fact that she was given a label of BPD. If we don't have the arena to talk about these things openly, we're never going to be able to create a network of support for each other. So if you do know somebody going through something, please talk to each other. Family members, friends and so on, loved ones, of people with mental health, start going on the internet, start picking up books, start looking at what you believe may be wrong. Encourage that person who may not be diagnosed with a mental health issue, encourage them. Rather than tell them there's something wrong, say you'll support them what they're going through and go with them, encourage them. And I know it's hard because a lot of people don't want to believe that they've got something that would be classed as a mental health issue. For the people who go through it daily, who don't have anyone to talk to, there are organisations out there. I think the wonderful thing about BCU service is that we are an online first contact. And it's a bit like filling in an Amazon kind of application. It's going to ask you, why do you want to see us? It's going to ask you how long you've been feeling this way. We'll ask you things about if you've got professional help, like a GP or a CPN or something like that. And then we ask, is there anything you haven't told us? So you can talk about you, knowing that that's going to be discussed between the professionals in the department. I am grateful for having depression and anxiety and other mental issues because it's helped me understand people around me a lot more. It's changed my life in terms of understanding, understanding what a mental illness is, what they have to go through, the hardships, the barriers that they face daily, not just against society but against themselves. I'm still normal. I am human.